Hi guys and welcome to a new video. So this is what to look for with LED headlight bulbs. So please do your own research to make sure you are happy before you purchase. I needed the H4 type which is the dip and main beam. Check in your Haynes manual which your car takes or search online as there are lots of different styles. So these are the two I bought. They're both night eye ones. Those are eight months old. These are just got within the last couple of days. So this set when I bought them was 25, it is now 7 months later 21 and this set was £48 and it is now 34 19 so I wanted this set originally but I wasn't going to put 50 quid into a set of headlight bulbs so I put 25 into that set. I have done a 7 month usage review on this bulb, on this set of bulbs and I can tell you straight away that this bulb will not pass its MOT with in your car. You have to put your halogen bulbs back in. I don't know whether that sets the same, but I don't I don't know. So the only way you can tell is leave them in and take them to the MOT and see if they pass or fail or not. But this one definitely failed. So these are 100% illegal. If you want to wear if you still want to use them, it's up to you, but they are 100% illegal that set. Just so you're aware. So so too many uh, too many wires in the setup is a bad idea. So these are designed with one wire coming out and they're all shrunk into a tube for easy routing. So that one has four and this one has five on it. This this one has five cables running through it and that one has four. And two of them must be for the fan because there's a fan inside that one. So one single wire with the wires inside is the best design. So waterproof cable connections is best and they both have a a waterproof connection that one has one and so does that one there's actually no ring on the other end of the cable there on I'll show you in a minute so cables are better coming out of the side so that one's coming out of the side but this one's coming out of the back so coming out of the side is better because in a tight space you can feed it out the side but this one comes out the back it's not really a problem for me because I can just root it anyway there's plenty of room behind the headlight I just have to take the bumper off and the headlights off as well because they're not easy to fit so small connectors in the wire is best so that's a small connector this one's a bit too big it's quite a big connector just a normal automotive connector nothing special so separate LED light and driver if one fails at least the other can be a spare so the red side this is the driver for the one on the red the red one on the right side as you can see the o-ring is there so it feeds into this driver which it, and then it feeds out to the power supply there which is three connections which is your normal h4 connection let's go ahead and show you what it says on the back wait for it to focus there we go dc 12 to 24 volts illuminance 1500 lux so that's the driver you have to fit that somewhere in the car what I did with my other one, which I'll show you now, this is the one for the silver one, is I used self-adhesive Velcro on the back. Let's show you the information on the driver. See if it'll focus, sorry about this. There we go, that's the information, that's where the cable goes in. And then what I did was twist the cable, so what happens is it's a bit too long I twisted it to stop it rubbing against each other and then what I did was take that and connect it to the cars electrical supply and then I pull tied the both pieces together onto the back of the headlight to stop it moving and that seemed to stop it wearing through there's no damage on the cable at all there so it needs a keyway in the connector so you don't wire the light up the wrong way these have both got keyways. That one's got a keyway in there somewhere. I don't know if you can see that. It's going to be difficult to see, but there is a keyway in there. It needs to focus first, obviously. Just bear with me. So there is a keyway in there. You can just see it at the top. And there is also one on there. It can only go in one way. I don't know if you can see that. So it's designed only to go one way. So it needs O-ring seals on the connectors as well, and that's exactly what's there. There's one on the black one. That red thing is the O-ring there to stop water getting into the connections. So thicker wire is a better design. When they're both reasonably thick, that one's a sleeve, and so is that one over what's in there. There's four cables in that one, and there's five in this one. So don't buy, don't buy lights with metal outer connectors. 
now we're into bulb cooling so the better cooling the brighter light so these two this one has a fan and a heat sink and runs 80 watt for two bulbs and this one only has a heat sink so that only runs at 60 watt for two bulbs so they are slightly different light temperatures though that one's 6,000 6,000 6,000 Kelvin and this one is 6,500 Kelvin so slightly brighter white light on that one so fans don't generally fail but most still have the heat sink so it has a fan and a heat sink so if the fan stops working it should still work there are also bulbs designed to work inside headlight enclosures so with mine these are exposed out in the atmosphere so this is what's on the back of my headlight and that the heat sink will just sit in there in outside in the air so some of them actually have plastic covers like a lunch box on over them to stop dirt getting in so they don't have to put the rubber covers on then so what happens is you won't fit these in them because they stick out so much from a normal bulb this is a normal bulb it's massively smaller obviously that's designed to fit into a, a very small housing so they'll make it designed to fit in that housing and anything else they're not interested in because that's all that's supposed to go in from the manufacturer's point of view so that's the normal bulb that'll fit in all right but nothing else will so you'll have to get one so the one I bought neither of these will fit inside a headlight enclosure as my headlight only has a rubber ring around the outside and the fan and the heat sink are out in the open air the one that will have the multiple so there is one that has multiple braided copper stainless woven belts sticking out of the back of the light and that can be pushed into any space so you put the bulb in and then you weave the but the braided copper belt to make it fit in so if there's any spare space in the housing you can fit it in so cooling for the bulb may be an issue with that new woven belt as when you put the cover back on the bulb may overheat and the woven belts as the design with the woven belts are the second hottest running lights of all four types this style is new and unproven so temperatures of each type of bulb in degrees and celsius in degrees celsius and fahrenheit so let me just get me notepad here to show you so this is the interesting thing that i found out so halogen there as you can see at the top is normally 60 so this is the normal halogen bulb that goes in your headlight so it's 65 degrees or 150 degrees Fahrenheit the fan and metal heat sink are running at 34 degrees or 93 Fahrenheit so I chose this one but if space is limited it might not work for you so the non fan non braided just heat sink which is this red one the other one is fan and metal heat sink at 30 that one's at 34 degrees celsius and this one does 77 to 84 degrees celsius that's, so that's quite a lot hotter so non-fan non-braided heat sink equals 77 degrees to 84 degrees or 171 to 184 f 20 percent hotter than halogen bulbs so the flexible braided belt type is 62 degrees or 143 degrees fahrenheit so the brightest bulbs use a large heat sink with a large surface area if you can see that let me just pull out a minute brightest bulbs use a large heat sink with a large surface area these are generally a lot more expensive which i think that one has a bigger surface area than that one so hopefully that should help there is a design that looks like an air cooled cylinder head designed to work with convection this is a new unproven design if it is enclosed in a housing it will struggle to cool the LEDs so stay away from multi LEDs multi LED on boards poor LEDs bad light poor LED so stay away from multi LEDs on board they are poor LEDs and bad light pattern and have a look at that item number if you want to see what I mean so cob is another one which is chip on board which is a bad light pattern cob is a brand new which looks like a yellow lump but it has got little leds inside it and they're not very good at all so cob chip on board is a bad light pattern cob is brand new to the market and untested you also want to watch out for the chrome reflector types and they are generation one and should be avoided so yeah chrome reflector type and it are generation one and should be avoided 
so 360 degree design are wrong type of light for a standard headlight housing and these were both sold to me as 360 degree light patterns so they're potentially I know for a fact that that one's illegal but I wouldn't be surprised if that one's the same I can't test it but I'm just guessing with this with the red set so the LEDs with Cree chips with plastic beads on the surface so these are terrible this design this is Cree chips as you can see I don't know if you can see let me just get this to focus so these are Cree chips with plastic beads on the surface I don't know if you can see them they're not easy to see but there's lumps of plastic working as lenses on top of the LEDs so so LEDs with Cree chips with plastic beads on the surface of the LEDs are terrible they're just not fit for purpose that one and that's why a good good chance that's why it failed its MOT so single LEDs need to meet so single LED single LEDs need to be good quality the best LEDs are branded ones these are supposedly Cree but I've no way of testing them on this one they're Cree and on this one they're Philips Luxian ZES I've no way of testing that if that's true either so the best LEDs are branded ones but the sellers could lie in and you have no real real way of checking as they could just stamp the brand on the circuit board or in this case not stamp anything I haven't took the covers off to see if they say any, anything underneath this is why I bought from the UK the factories generally send better stock to the UK and a lot cheaper to return if you have a problem the LED light needs to be a copy of the light pattern of the halogen bulb to work properly so this is your halogen bulb as you can see it's quite complicated inside there there's a little bath reflector that sits underneath the the actual filament there I don't know if you can see it It'd be nice if the camera would focus there we go there's a little bath and then there's one of them's the main and one of them's the dip so I don't know how they work but that's the standard halogen bulb So the LED light needs to be a copy of the light pattern of the halogen bulb to work properly. So the best LEDs available are Philips Luxian LumaLED series. And the best one is supposed to be ZES 1620. And small LEDs mimic halogen bulbs. So that's obviously that bulb. Those LEDs are a lot smaller than these ones. These are massive. These are more for torches really. This one in the left, in my left hand. That's, they're really Cree torch bulbs. That's that's exactly what they are, Cree torch bulbs. But just six of them, three on each side. So small LEDs mimic halogen bulbs. So that's it. So hopefully that's helped you decide which ones you want. I'm about to go and fit these to the car now. If you have any questions at all, let me know and I'll try and help you because I have had these fitted for seven months. I'd fit them again if they weren't such a nightmare to fit. What, what I found the issue was with these was the gap in the middle. That's the big problem with these. This is the reason I went with this one is the gap is too small for a rubber boot. Whereas this one should fit a lot easier. What I'm actually going to do is this this set should have a glass tube on it and an end cap. And I'm going to not run with that either the glass tube or the end cap to cool the chips as best as I can. You see it's branded on the top as well. So there's five chips, three at the front and two at the back. So I'm about to go and fit these to the car. If you have any questions, let me know. So thanks for watching and uh, check back soon. Cheers.